it's time for more Steam Deck coverage and more Tomb Raider, but not with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Today we're going back to the original trilogy and technically the first reboot of Lara Croft, a simpler time in the age of the PS2 and PS3, before the quote unquote Tomb Raider ripped off Uncharted ripped off Tomb Raider. A time when Lara Croft had more fantastical adventures. When she wasn't fighting against body swapping spirits or accidentally starting the Mayan apocalypse, but instead finding the Lost Valley and going into a gunfight with a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, let's see how the Steam Deck can run Tomb Raider Legend, Tomb Raider Anniversary, and Tomb Raider Underworld. To give a brief summary, this trilogy is the first reboot of the Tomb Raider franchise, focusing the story less on random tombs and historical places but it is a personal story for Lara herself. Legend about her tracking down artifacts related to her mother's disappearance, Anniversary, a remake of the original game, and Underworld, a sequel that tried to bring the story beats of Legend and Anniversary together. While Underworld is a bit mixed among fans, Legend and Anniversary hold a special place for me, both on PC and especially on the PlayStation Portable, despite how bad the PSP version of Legend was. They took the same style as the original PS1 games and rebooted with better controls and a much more immersive and interesting story. Now let's talk about how the Steam Deck can run these games. It can get a little wonky, so we'll talk about gameplay aspects as well as performance for each title. Let's start in release order. Tomb Raider Legend is the most wonky. The camera sensitivity is absurd with the camera jumping around at the slightest move of the right analog stick and navigating menus is a little on the weird side, having you move around with the analog stick rather than the D-pad. Combat especially gets wonky with the camera, having you rely a lot more on the lock-on feature to not have the camera constantly bumping and jumping around. You can adjust to this camera sensitivity, but it's really noticeable. Now, performance is perfect. This game doesn't really have any graphical settings you can change. At least that's what I'd like to say. Legend does have a lot of pretty decent stuff you can go into with display settings like depth of field, anti-aliasing, shadows, reflection, and water effects, but I'd probably stay away from next generation content. It enhances a lot of the lighting and models of the game to look more realistic, but in my opinion, just like with Tomb Raider 2013 versus the sequels, it kind of screws up character models and faces. Here is Lara's face normally with the next generation content turned off, and here it is again with it on, which almost looks like a completely different character. It also messes with lighting in the Japan level specifically. When you're outdoors with the next generation of X on, you can't see much at all. Enemies just look like silhouettes, but as soon as you turn it off, you can see the detail of everything around you. Now let's move on to other settings. Make sure the resolution is set to that 1280 by 720 and you'll get a perfect 60 frames per second from start to finish. Even in the busier cities, fight scenes, or even the motorcycle level will keep you at 60. Next is Anniversary, the nearly one-to-one -one remake of the original Tomb Raider with a little bit changed with Lara's backstory. It's significantly easier to play on the deck, menus are more responsive, you navigate them with the D-pad instead of the analog stick, and the camera is so much smoother on sensitivity. It feels a lot more natural like you're playing the console version versus a game built for PC that has gamepad support. Anniversary also has performance options at startup. Go ahead and turn everything on. Resolution up to 1280 by 720, crank up every option, effect, and setting at your disposal, and you will fly through this game at a near perfect 60 FPS. Across several hours of playing, I had it drop to 58 once for like a split second, but even when fighting enemies and bosses, it never lost that 60 range. Then we get to Tomb Raider Underworld, the main hurdle of this trilogy. To start things off, the game puts you in keyboard and mouse mode, requiring you to move reticles around for menus, and gives you no option to crouch or dodge without an actual keyboard. So change the controller layout, not to gamepad, that also limits you. Change it to gamepad with mouse and gyro. This lets you use the analog stick for the circle menu and the default control scheme of, using PlayStation terminology, square for grapple, X for jump, circle for rolling, and triangle for interacting. But then there's performance. I don't remember Underworld's PC port being bad, but it runs terribly on the deck, at least by default. You can turn everything on and it'll look great with 60 FPS, but moving the camera will give you near endless game freezing stutters. Bringing settings down does not fix this, 
but changing from Linux to Proton can. However, you're going to want an old version of Proton, not new. You throw on Proton 8 and you will see no improvements, and experimental is even worse as you're seeing right here. But if you put it on Proton 4 or 3, it'll run much smoother. What I suggest, turn on Proton 3.7-8, leave most of the default settings the way they are when you first boot the game, but turn VSync on as well to help performance a little more. It's not going to be stutter free, but there'll be occasional and not game freezing. The frame rate will also stay pretty high like this. I get 60 most of the time, but I would say maybe a couple times an hour, it'll dip down to 43. This is still good, but if you want it a little bit better, you can drop textures down to medium or low, or just lock the deck down to 40 FPS and there won't be a problem. And now we've got battery life. I did this separately considering how different Underworld is than the prior two. Tomb Raider's Legend and Anniversary get around 5 hours on high brightness and 6 hours on lower brightness. Whereas Tomb Raider Underworld will net you about 3.5 hours on high brightness and a little over 4 on lower brightness. Now, as we wrap this up, would I recommend the original Tomb Raider trilogy of games to Steam Deck users? I would say absolutely yes for Anniversary and maybe for Legend and Underworld. If you can deal with the clunkiness of Legend's camera, it and Anniversary are two of the best games of the series. And while Underworld takes a bit of work to get running smoothly, you can still get there by putting in those changes. And that's all I've got for you today. I'll be back soon with more Steam Deck coverage and reviews. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.